when Buddha was asked to centralize his teachings, what is the essence of the teachings? He said, in Tibetan, Dikpa Chum Mizya Shin Gyo Apusun Tsokpa Che, Ranga Sem Yung Sun Dundan Sangi Tempe. You understand? Dikpa Chum Mizya Shin means, this really actually, I always share this because it really essentializes, it encapsulates the entire teaching of the Buddha. Because Buddha teachings actually, Buddha was an extraordinary, uh, you can say, master who, through his enlightenment, saw that everyone, without exception, had the same potential as him, the potential of enlightenment. You understand? But then he saw, because of ignorance, they failed to see the true nature. So he's very much moved by the suffering because created out of ignorance, negative emotion, negative karma. He was very moved and wanted to really show each and every one of us the way of really realizing our own nature, or how do you say, realizing our own potential, the potential of what is called ultimate happiness, which is enlightenment. In fact, in Buddhism, uh, when you talk about enlightenment, people sometimes think, oh, help. enlightenment, that's not for me. It's only for holy men and women. But actually, really, actually speaking, knowing or, or knowingly or not, or unknowingly, we actually are all seeking for happiness or, or a, I blurted out any anyway, happiness, but just basically what I mean by seeking for enlightenment, actually ultimate, because what enlightenment is, is the lasting and ultimate happiness which is free of sorrow, which is free of suffering in the course. Because what creates suffering is ignorant negative emotion and negative karma, one that has been purified. And when we realize are uh, the potential, are uh, the omniscience, you see, the potential of enlightenment, then each one of us can realize our true nature. Often I think that, you see, I do not like the word Buddhism, because Buddhism limits Buddhism, because it's not an ism at all. But because people say Buddhism, so we say Buddhism. And it's not also a Tibetan word anyway, it's English word. So it is not Buddha, Shakyamuni is, you know, his way, his kind of, his doctrine, his approach, his line that we are following. Ultimately, actually, what really, if you were to use Buddhism, is a way of for each one of us to realize our Buddha nature and become a Buddha. So our Buddha's way, way for each one of us to realize our potential come to enlightenment is what Buddhism really. Is that correct? That's why Buddha taught in so many ways. He taught in 84,000 different ways that to be. And all of them, when we kind of boil them down, fundamentally, it turned into what called three vehicles of the teaching of Buddha. I know there are some Buddhist practitioners here, so for their benefit, that's called the, the basic vehicle, which is sometimes known as Theravada tradition. Then there is the Mahayana, the Bodhisattva vehicle, and there's the Vajrayana. And so, in fact, this reason why I mentioned this is that because when we talk about when Buddha was asked to centralize his teachings, when he said, these three lines actually point to these three vehicles teaching Buddha in a central way. That's to say, when he said, first line, when you translate roughly into English, it means commit not a single unwholesome action. Well, then you might say, but how could I possibly not commit a single unwholesome action? What it really means is that as much as possible, abandon all the unwholesome, negative and harmful actions which are the cause of suffering for yourself and others. Is that clear? 
And that is the basis of the first speaker of the teaching of the Buddha. The main essence of that is not to harm others. As great Tibetan masters always say, if you can't help, at least don't harm. And most important of all, don't keep malice and hatred in your heart. Keep your heart and mind pure. If you can't help, at least don't help. Is that clear? And next is then if you can, then next line is meaning cultivate the wealth of virtue. That is to say, as much as possible, adopt on the other hand, as much as possible, po adopt all the positive and wholesome and beneficial actions which are the cause of happiness for ourselves and others. So here when we come to this, it refers to the Bodhisattva Veko, the Mahayana, where the emphasis is upon the altruism, about the development of love and compassion, which is developing the, cultivating the wealth of virtue. Is that clear? Hello. <laughs> now the third <coughs> and the last, he says, Ranga Semnyon Sundar. This is the most important thing. Ranga Semnyon Sundar is to tame this mind of ours. Rang means oneself, sem is mind, ndul is to tame. To tame this mind of us, to transform this mind of us, to understand this mind of us, to realize this mind of us, to conquer this mind of us. In fact, that is the basis of Vajrayana. But then, if you were to really put it, that the, actually the many great masters always say, great Tibetan masters always say that, if you were to really say, what is the essence of the teaching of the Buddha? It is this, Ranga Samnyosam, the last line, the third line, to tame this mind of ours. You understand? To tame this mind of ours. To transform this mind. Because if you conquer your mind, then you will naturally be refraining from harm. You naturally be cultivating virtue. Because when you look at it, who really harm? Who really helps is the mind or the heart. Because we have three things called body, speech, and mind. Through They are known as in the teachings, the three door. That means through these three, we do positive things or we accumulate negative karma or negative actions. Is that clear? But of these three things, the body and speech are just merely subservient to the mind. Mind or heart is really the boss. Boss. That's why often in the Tibetan teachings, mind is the boss. 